Moving along, we see something typical. End hammers removed and center lines picked up. Now this was a little tricky on this job because these hammers had already been replaced. And uh, I think that's probably a good example there. The center lines, uh, in terms of being 90 degrees to the shank, were way off. So that took some thought. And I'll explain that later as we move along in the process as well. Whoop. Now here I have a millimeter scale resting on the action in order to check what we call action spread. Also in the background, of course, you can see the rest of my shop. <laughs> a standard number there we go is 112 millimeters and because this scale is not sitting exactly at the center point of that center pin on the whipping it's also off a little bit right there, but it's exactly 112 millimeters, and that's uh, right on the money. In inches, that's 4.40 inches, or think of it as 440. Very easy number for piano tuners. A little bit more than four and three eighths of an inch. So our spread is good, and we'll discuss what that means later on. Okay, we pointed out earlier that these hammers which were replaced many years ago with Steinway hammers, which are what these are, were not hung at 90 degrees. So that presented a possible problem for us as we assessed the situation and how to proceed. Let me get a close-up here, but very quickly, this scale that's on here measures 130 millimeters from the center of the center pin to the dark line, which I have drawn on here, the dark line being a true 90 degrees. The red line is actually the center line of this hammer, and you can see that the red line is way off from the dark line of the 90 degrees. Let's get a close-up. Okay, that should work. The scale is upside down, but you can see the 130 millimeters, or the 5 eighths of an inch, out at the dark line. So that was a good thing to see, because as I extended this dark line up at 90 degrees, it hit the center point of the hammer top the same as the red line, which is off 90 degrees. So I felt pretty good that the center point of the hammers was something I could use to line up the rest of the set except that the new set will be hung at 90 degrees and not way off like on this red line. I'll remove the scale. You can see the center line of the hammer itself in red and then the 90 degrees of my line. Now the 90 degrees is picked up by picking up the center of the hammer shank. You see? If you don't do this you won't know where you are. The center of the hammer shank and over on this end, which is out of view right now, the center of the center pin. That right there is the orientation we're looking for. Now I'll show you a hammer that's been properly bored and is about to be hung at 90 degrees to the shank. Okay, here we have a square tool. It's a very nice gauge. You've probably seen them, you probably have one, with this nice long piece coming out and then the scale itself in a protractor arrangement. This is set exactly to 90 degrees and you can see at this end we're cutting the center pin in half as best we can and it crosses over the center of the hammer shank at this point. There's a little dark line inside here and I believe you can see the dark line which is the center point of this hammer itself makes for a very true 90 degrees I'll remove this and here we can see our line on the hammer itself that cuts the shank in half and our center line of the hammer now a tip let's focus in here I think we can see that now. 
When picking up center lines of hammers, it's best to start with the point of the molding and then pick a point between the widest places on the felt where it comes down. You can't always trust that the center line is going to have any sort of relationship to the cove cut. It may or it may not. But if you pick up a center point midway here to here, put a little dot there, and then connect this point with that point and extend the line all the way up and down, that will be the center point of your hammer. As you do several of them, you will find out if there is in fact a decent relationship with the cove. And if so, then you won't have to make this center point. You can just pick up the outside of the cove, which is more or less usual, but you can't depend on it. So this is a good center line that cuts this molding in half and a cross line that cuts the shank in half. And that is how we decide where the center line of the hammer is and that is what becomes useful for not only uh, hanging these hammers 90 degrees to the shank but the first step which was when you bored the hammers that you were boring them 90 degrees to this center line and that's where you need to set your boring jig up however uh, it works for you there are different models of boring jigs out there but whichever one you use you need to have this center line drawn in your hammer so that when you drill down through you're coming 90 degrees to the center line of the hammer okay here you can see how we get our hammer hung square to the shank now what you're looking at is a square part of the gauge that I was using earlier ignore this arm going down at an angle that's only there to support the square piece actually rectangle so it will stand up it's sitting on the jig that we use 